Well, good morning and welcome back to Morning at NTV. My name is Idris Matu Segawa. And we have entered that segment of the show called Technot. And we're talking about oil and gas and why skills are very, very important. Now, if you did not know, on Monday, the final investment decision was signed, which means we are starting to get on to that journey of producing oil in maybe two, three, four years in the future. But right now, construction is going to begin. Uh, the pipeline that takes the oil from Uganda to Tanzania. There are so many opportunities that are available, but do you have the skills? And in studio, I have Dr. Safina Musene, Commissioner Health Training, Ministry of Education, and uh, Oscar Muhumuza, Department, Academic Registrar, Uganda Petroleum Institute in Chigomba. Good morning. Morning, Id Idris. Yes. Uh, mm. Doctor. Yes, dear. I will start with you. Mm. Uh, there is a skills competition going on. Mm -hmm. But before we talk about the competition, what kind of skills are we looking at uh, that I have to have to be able to benefit from the oil and gas sector? Well, thank you very much, Edris, uh, for this question. As I was told, I'm called Dr. Safina Musenekisu. And the, the skills that somebody needs to have to be able to manage in the oil sector uh, uh, technical skills, the one that uh, help that person to manipulate the various equipment, interpersonal skills, leadership skills, innovative skills, and of course more details will be provided by Oscar mm. who is the technical person in that field. And but uh, mm. that person must know how to manipulate especially as far as our agenda for skills, skill in Uganda, we want a person that when he's put in an industry like for oil, is able to do the job mm. as required. Mr. Muhumuza Oscar, mm. you are from the Uganda Petroleum Institute. That's true. Tell us about the institute and some of the courses that you offer there. Well, thank you, Idris, and uh, good morning, uh, our viewers. I'm called Oscar Mouza, the future academic registrar at Uganda Petroleum Institute Chigumba. Uh, Uganda Petroleum Institute Chigumba is the premier oil and gas center of excellency. It's a public institution that started way back in uh, 2019, initially as a presidential directive, uh, who saw uh, a vision of uh, creating opportunity for Uganda because uh, otherwise, if we didn't have this kind of training, then the jobs would go out with uh, other craftsmen that would come along with the operators. Mm. So this institution was put in place to prepare uh, Ugandans to be able to take up the opportunities that... Uh, and you gave a very good preamble. Uh, now is the time. We are going into the construction phase. And so uh, those that have always thought that the story of oil and gas in Uganda is uh, politics, <laughs> this is the time. This is the time. The opportunity. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So we, you asked about the courses. Uh, we mainly have two categories of courses. We have maintenance courses. And mm. this is where we train people in uh, electrical maintenance, instrumentation maintenance, uh, mechanical maintenance. Then uh, we have welders. Uh, we train them in safety. Safety is paramount in the oil and gas sector. And then we have the oil and gas operator courses, which uh, we, we mainly have downstream uh, petroleum operations and upstream petroleum operation. Mm. So we have a myriad of courses. We have rigging and scaffolding, but uh, the, 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 the key word in training is safety. You might ask, haven't we had uh, uh, technicians uh, in those areas? Yes, but we have to reorient them to be able to work safely in the oil and gas uh, industry. Mm. Yes. I'm told Kigumba is the first to get a new oil training accreditation in Africa. Mm. How does this impact your institute? Uh, we, uh, we need to qualify that. Uh, uh, we are not the first institution per se, no. but for the, the specific courses that we've been accredited to offer, specifically for OPITO. Mm. Uh, the information available about uh, OPITO centers 
we are the only ones. But uh, there are a few uh, centers in uh, North Africa and West Africa that specifically focus on safety. Mm. Uh, the impact, of course, number one, we get endorsement. We, every country has got its uh, qualification framework. Yeah. And we have different players. Uh, we, we have uh, uh, companies from China, uh, we have the French Total, we have Sinoc, we have AMA, we have... So every uh, organization n cannot come with its own standards from its origin, uh, country of origin. So we, uh, Opito cuts across. When you say Opito, yes. what, does, what is Opito that? Opito is an offshore petroleum industry training organization. Okay. Uh, it's one of the most coveted uh, training uh, qualification standard that is required in the oil and gas industry mm. and it's recognized globally uh, whether you're, you're dealing with with Sinoc or with uh, with Total they, they they will appreciate they'll know that the, the person that has been uh, certified by Opito is competent mm. because they know the assessment standards of Opito and so that is why we cannot say okay we will take our national qualification framework which we do have because we already have industry and we have uh, TVET that has been on for very many years. We have technicians, but are they recognized in the oil and gas industry? No, and that's how the certifications come in. Mm. Mm -hmm. yes. Okay, so please continue with what you were talking about before, mm. earlier on. Uh, remind me. <laughs> <laughs> well, you were the talking program. about the programs. The yes, I mentioned programs. the programs. Yes. Uh, we have uh, uh, upstream petroleum operations, downstream petroleum operations. Yeah. <laughs> so many uh, maintenance <laughs> programs, uh, <laughs> like uh, electrical <laughs> instrumentation, uh, rigging and scaffolding, yeah. uh, welding. We have, uh, and the welding we are talking about here is. Specialized welding, uh, you, you'll hear of terminologies like 3G, 6G coded welders. Mm. So these are the, the welders that work with precision that you would need to, to deploy on projects such as the pipeline project. You will not get uh, our uh, ordinary welder to work on such projects. So that's the kind of training that we are offering at the Institute. Mm. Thank you. So, considering that uh, very few countries in the world, and I'm told, like France and Trinidad and Tobago, have got this accreditation, uh, you're talking about the OPITO, where does this place oil and gas training in Uganda, you think? Will I be able, <coughs> if I train from Kigumba, will I be able to work internationally? Definitely. As a matter of fact, uh, as the young people say these days, w w this accreditation yeah. make Uganda uh, in the category of the big boys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but jokes aside, uh, uh, definitely uh, we are in a, a great position in that the process to get these accreditations is rigorous. Uh, in order for you to get them, you must have uh, the, the right infrastructure. Uh, this process started way back in about uh, 2017. You can imagine how long it has taken. We had, government had to put in place the, the, the infrastructure that was required, the, the equipment, uh, develop the, the curriculum that is globally acceptable, mm -hmm. and uh, recruit and train competent trainers and assessors. So uh, all these preparations have put us at a, a, in a position where we are able to provide uh, training services in oil and gas, even for the region. So it's not uh, only about uh, the, the, the country. Yeah. Okay. Are there some new developments that have come with this accreditation? Because it's a big deal and it's sure. now you're playing with the big boys, sure. as you say. <laughs> <laughs> so are there some new uh, developments that have come along with the accreditation? Definitely. I, I, I wish you could uh, visit us, but you, you can also check out the developments on our website. Yeah. Uh, but uh, we have now state-of-the-art infrastructure. Mm -hmm. We have equipment that when uh, oil and gas companies visit, they will tell you that we have only seen this somewhere in Scotland or, 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 or the U.S. Yeah. So when I say we, we, we are at that, uh, <laughs> at level, that level, it is true. And uh, you can visit our website, uh, take a virtual tour of our gallery, see what is done there, but mm. also visit. Many people, we are, we are out of uh, Kampala, we are in Chigumba, and so uh, 
very many people are not aware that uh, actually this institution exists and so I take this opportunity mm -hmm. to tell Ugandans, especially the youth, please come, uh, visit our website, see what we offer and, and enroll. And there are very many opportunities. Yeah. Uh, oil and gas training is not cheap. Uh, it's quite uh, pricey. We have very few people. <laughs> of <course>. Yes, yes. <laughs> and, uh, but government has come in. It has offered scholarships. Uh, you've probably heard about the uh, Albertine Region Sustainable Development Program, where we've taken on 690 learners, 100% paid for by the government. Amazing. Uh, we have another 200 uh, that have been offered 80% training mm. subsidies, so they end up paying about 300,000 for their training instead of about 7 uh, million shillings. So uh, government has stepped in. Even companies, uh, you recent, we recently uh, we launched a program with Total. Uh, we'll be training 150 uh, personnel that mm. will eventually work with Total, fully funded. Uh, we've had trainees supported by the private sector foundation, Sinoc. So uh, the, the companies really have, because we are training for, for the industry, and industry needs to step in and, and support the, these young people that can afford, cannot afford these uh, lifetime opportunities. Mm. Yes. Well, and uh, you talked about enrollment yes. and how pricey yes. <laughs> it is. <laughs> so for the youth uh, out there who is watching, yes. what do I need in terms of qualification to actually mm. get a place in your institute? You, Uganda has been going into, uh, uh, Hajat could speak better to this, uh, yeah. Tibet <laughs> reforms, in that uh, we are at a point where we are recognizing uh, prior learning. Yeah. Uh, what that means is uh, if you have some experience, your mm. academic background may not be great, but you have had some uh, experience. Like if you've been a welder in Katwe or mm. in any artisan uh, uh, sector, you can we can consider that as experience mm. and uh, try to enhance that skill. So we have, uh, the, the di we have diploma courses. Those are national diplomas and of course we have to follow. You have to have done the relevant subjects and you, have, you should have a craft certificate or a S6 certificate. But for, for the uh, technician jobs, uh, we, we also train and, and we, we focus on prior learning and so all you need is basic English language and, uh, and, and, and we take you through uh, a diagnostic test to ensure that you will be able to, to take, uh, go through the, the training. Because mm. yeah. I'm sure so many youth are excited about uh, opportunity oil and gas is mm -hmm. here mm -hmm. it's a big 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 uh, economy contributor mm -hmm. but I'll come to you Dr. Musene mm -hmm. the skills are there and there's an opportunity to mm -hmm. basically me as a, a youth to mm -hmm. get skills that are going to enable me to mm -hmm. participate in the oil and gas sector mm -hmm. there is a skills competition yes tell us about that okay Thank you very much. But even before you go to the skills competition, I just wanted to conclude what Eska Oscar was talking about. Mm. Uh, we, have, we are undergoing a lot of reforms in the TVET, and you recall that we will cabinet approved the TVET policy in 2019. Mm. And this TVET policy, so one interesting thing in it is it is demand-driven. Whatever training that we offer, we must get a message, a request from the world of work, from mm. the industry, that we want these skills. Like now for oil and gas, we have already been told we want, and all those programs Oscar was talking about, we, we, we want them. Mm. Then there's also an issue of flexibility, and that's what Oscar was talking about, uh, recognition of prior learning. Yes, we have this category of students who have gone through basic education, secondary, and reached A level, and they have attained the grades of taking them to a diploma program in UPIC. But there are also those ones that did not get the chance to undergo such uh, education, basic education. Mm. So all those ones that are there, what is done in UPIC and the same trend that will be done in all institutions that when you come, we say, what can you do? And we assess you 
and we appreciate the competences that you have, and then we start from there to go forward. Mm. So that's what Oscar was talking about, and this is going to help us to improve improve on the training, but also improve on access to TVET. Mm. You remember last time we did regional, uh, local, uh, decentralized interviews, and we got many students that were interested to come in. So when we get such, then we, uh, we, we, we make them go through the, the recognition of prior learning, then we can train them better. Mm. So like Oscar said, we encourage everybody to come on. Now coming back to World Skills Competition, mm. the National Skills Competition that we, are, we, are st we started yesterday. And this competition is, is uh, an activity where students are trained through various competences and uh, and and then their teachers gauge their performance but also their interest and then they are helped to to identify what skill they want to compete in mm. then they they are done the students like uh, within one school they get like four four five students and then they compete those ones that perform very well in those competitions, like you are competing in running, mm. like you are competing in football. So now you are competing to perform a skill, like uh, we are talking for oil and gas. Now we have here laboratory technology, we have welding. So they bring five of them, they do a particular skill in welding, and they are scored. So the best that go through at institutional level are the ones that are brought at regional level. We have the four regions. For us in the World Skills Uganda, we initiated the four regions, the Central Region, Eastern Region, Northern Region, and Western Region. So various skills for, 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 for TVET, for vocational, for health, for business, they come together in those regions, and they also again, they compete. Mm. in the various skills. And those ones that go through, we, we mainly bring number one and number two. Those are the ones that are now presented at a at national level. Mm. And when they come at national level again, we have now, but before they even come, at institutional level they have been uh, trained to compete. When they reach regional level they are challenged and again they are trained, they are prepared. And now they are attached to industries. Like we have those ones who are doing cooking, have those who are doing nursing, those who are doing welding, they are tied to various industries and they improve their skills. So when they come again now, starting today, they will be exposed to certain skills again and they compete. They do, they will do today and tomorrow and they will come out with a product. So those ones that go through and they are number one. We identify them as our national candidates, candidates for those skills and Uganda became a member of World Skills International, mm. and we have an opportunity of going to World Skills competition. And the next competition is going to take place in October in Shanghai, China. How so many people ca uh, can we take? We, we are still an associate member, mm. and an associate member we take we participate in three trades, mm. so we can take three competitors and three. Experts. Every student comes with an expert. Mm -hmm. It is a one-to-one. -one. Ah. It is a one-to-one. -one. You come with your uh, your expert, your coach. Let me call him a coach. <laughs> your yeah. coach, and then of course you find there are other people that are also expert in that area. Mm -hmm. So Uganda can present three uh, three competitors in the World Skills come October mm -hmm. 2022. Uh, doctor, can we just uh, again elaborate uh, some of the the skills mm. that will be um, competed in and the courses okay. that are competing in this okay. uh, world competition? We, at a regional level, we had 19 courses that we, are, we competed in. Mm. And uh, now at national, we are having 18 of them. The students are going to compete in, in midwifery, in nursing, in clinical medicine, mm. in laboratory technology, in pharmacy, in woodwork technology. Woodwork technology is what we used to call carpentry. Mm. Now we change the language to woodwork technology. 
in the brick laying and concrete practice, in plumbing and heating. I, we followed uh, officers from means of, of water. Mm -hmm. So now the plumbers that we are talking about will be competing in agro-processing and agro-machinery. Because Uganda, we know very well that is an agricultural country. Mm -hmm. But we have noted that we lack a skill of processing our product. So we are putting emphasis there. And we have taught students to do certain processing. And they will be competing in in fabrication, mm -hmm. in fashion and design. Now, we want to, 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 to have our products, to make our clothes and, <laughs> and, and we buy from our industry. Yeah. In the restaurant service, now we are, since we have tourism among our key sectors, also want to develop the, in the, 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 the tourism industry. So mm -hmm. we shall have restaurant service and cookery and electric installation painting and decoration and automobile auto mechanics. Mm. So those are the, the, and of course the welding that is key in Kigumba. Uh, it is uh, one uh, of uh, them. Muhumza, are you uh, presenting any students to into the competition <laughs> from your uh, The second one, no, we participated <laughs> in the first one. After COVID, we had to rearrange our, our calendar Yes, uh, and we brought uh, our industry training to the tail end. So currently, all our learners are in the field, so mm. we couldn't prepare. Yeah, but mm. we we were in the first one, and it was great. Amazing. Mm. Uh, so, Doctor, I'll come back to you again. Mm. So, what happens to the winner mm. after the competition is done? Thereafter? Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, what I have not told you that we are expecting 92 participants this time oh, wow. from 55 institutions. And the uh, 37 of them are female. Mm. That's another exciting thing as far as TV is Indeed. concerned. You know, we've been having more men, but having 37 out of 55, mm. that is a big percentage, more than 30%. Promoting and uh, that means that now the girl child is also coming in TV. Yeah. So the winners, what happened to the winners? Of course, we, it is known that the first always get a gold medal, the second get a, a, a silver medal, and the third get a bronze, bronze. medal. But in these competitions, there's one principle that we have to appreciate. Whether you are number one or you are number four, if we had four competitors, I don't mm. want to use the word last. <laughs> Whether you are number one or you are number four, all of them are winners. Yes. The exposure of uh, exposure of those participants in this competition make them to gain a lot mm. out of it. You, uh, one of the things that you gain is you, you from the time you, the, the, motiv the confidence in you that make you to join those competition. Mm. The training that you go through the connection that you get when you are competing, all that make that person be a winner. Mm. Of course, we shall also have some other prizes that I cannot mention here. Yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we want to, to motivate them at the end of the day. And of course, every participant will get a certificate of participation mm. for within these activities. Where will the competition be? The competitions are, we have the main competition ground at Nakawa Vocational Training College. Mm. And that's where we main have the main technical TV courses. Mm. Then we have a set three satellite camp uh, satellite competition sites. At Mulago School of Nancy and Midwifery, we have Nancy and Midwifery. And then at Uganda Institute of Allied Health in Mulago, we have um, laboratory technology, mm. pharmacy and clinical medicine. And then cooking is in, in Uganda Institute for, ho for t Hotel and Tourism okay. in Jinja. Mm. And the reason why we have put them that way is that's where we have such a resource. We want the students to compete in the real, real mm. world experience, not mimic experience. Mm. And somebody who is cooking must be in the center of excellence for, for cooking, and that's Jinja. Training Institute for heresy, that's Mulago, and that's why we have chosen those sites for 
for for welding that is uh, nakawa yeah. and plumbing nakawa and so on so we want the students to use the real equipment and that's what we have done yeah. we we have um, we will have a virtual enhancement that will be able to see what is happening in all those sites but also we encourage the population if they can to and move to, to those to come and, participate. and participate and view we shall also have an exhibition mm. of <coughs> what we have done and Oscar here has an exhibition talk more about oil okay. and the gas <laughs> and the well, and the conference well mm. we shall mm. we are going to be talking more about mm. this just right after this break mm. do not go away mm. Well, good morning and welcome back to Morning at NTV. My name is Idris Matusegawa and we're talking about skills. Your skills that you have or do not have and how you can attain them so that you can contribute or be part of the oil and gas sector. An exciting and monumental moment for Uganda as a country and the Ugandan economy. And in studio, I still have Dr. Safina Kisu Musenene and Muhumuza from Kigumba, an institute that is giving you skills in oil and gas sector that you can use and get that opportunity at the moment. So I'll come to you, Doctor. Thank We've you. We've been talking about uh, the skills competition before the break. Mm. So the question will be, who is eligible to participate in the okay. competition? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, again, let me remind the viewers that I'm coming from means of education. Yes. <laughs> 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 Doctor, you're popular. They know you. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the skills competition, we, we have, I told you earlier that we became a member of World Skills International. Mm. That means that there is a standard that we use to get the competitors. Mm. One of the standards is you must be attached to an organized institution. Uh, it can be a formal institution or in any form, but it must be recognized by Ministry of Education. You mm. don't come as an individual from nowhere. Mm. And then you, the leader of that institution is the one that registers you to, to compete. Mm. And then you must be, a, a, for the former one, as a student of the junior uh, certificate. Yeah. Uh, or a student of the national certificate or a student of the colleges. For now, mm. we are still any at college level. But we have plans to go beyond college level to universities and other institutions. Then for world schools, like the people that will take for world schools, you must be below age 22. Meaning that the emphasis is on the youth, those people mm. who want to train and see that they go through the ladder and they perform. Mm. So those are the, the, the criteria that we use. And as I told you, you must have a, an expert or your personal coach and you come with that identification from your institution. Doctor, Muhumuza mm. uh, mm. talked about um, welcoming mm. students that probably have had prior training, mm. although it's not official, mm. maybe I didn't have an opportunity to mm. Uh, mm. pay myself uh, mm. school fees or tuition to go mm. into an institute and get certification. Mm. But I've been working probably at a garage mm. in my village. Mm. I've been working at um, a shop mm. whereby I, I know tailoring, I know a little bit of fashion. Mm. Is there something being done for that caliber of potential students? Yes. Each country, when you become a member state, each country sets again its standards. Yeah. Like uh, in world schools, they have not taken on agriculture-related trades. Mm. However, when we discuss this with World Skills International, who are advised to develop ours, and then we will present for approval at an opportune time. We are still in the, in the learning stage. As we make it better, then we shall make it as a trade for competition. Mm. Here in Uganda, we are having only 19, but at World Skills, it's about 52 trades that they compete in. 
from various and from different levels of competence, highly skilled like uh, aircraft and so on, mm. to, to, to the normal one like uh, cooking and so on. So for, for, for us as Uganda, we have appreciated that our non-formal industry is big. Mm -hmm. So we, we, uh, we have plans of seeing how we can motivate the non-formal and regardless of their age. Because once we go there, then we don't look into age. Because many people have learned their skills and maybe they are 22, maybe they are 23 and 25 and so on. However, what we, we will inform those ones that when, even if they become the gold medalist, they cannot compete in world skills because there is yeah. a standard of age. And that means that we need to prepare those ones that will compete mm. in world skills. Doctor, mm. when is the competition opening? The competition is opening today at Nakawa Vocational College and we expect Honorable Jesse Muyingo, the Minister of, of State for Higher Education, to open this competition at 11 o'clock. Mm. So, and, but during this opening, we expect even as a, uh, the development partners, especially Enabel mm. and Berijam and World Bank, also expect the private sector and uh, of course students mainly because we want to make them appreciate skills. The major aim of this skills competition is mm. to make them appreciate skills and work on the attitude towards uh, uh, Tibet. That's yeah. the main objective of this skills competition. Well. And then the closing will be tomorrow mm. and we are expecting the vice president to close at three o'clock and that's when we will be sharing the results of this competition but as i earlier told you we have also a skills forum where we shall have uh, uh, experts in tv presenting some papers ah, mm. perfect mm. i'll come to you oscar muhomoza yes. uh, tell us about <coughs> some of other accreditations that uh, the institute that you're coming from has okay. Yeah, thank you, Idris. Uh, uh, before that, uh, uh, Dr. Musene mentioned something about TVET being open to all ages. Mm. We focus a lot on the youth, yeah. but uh, we do not. Uh, it's not a barrier. The same applies to uh, uh, previous qualifications. If you have a degree, a master's degree that mm. is not helping you, uh, or uh, it, it shouldn't be a barrier to coming back to mm. a diploma or a certificate. So please, uh, we, we invite everyone to enroll in TVET uh, because it's the only thing that will transform our economy faster. Yeah. Now, having said that, uh, about other qualifications, yes, uh, sometime back in 2013, there was uh, a manpower survey for the oil and gas industry. At that point, uh, we, it was recommended that we go in for city and guilds and OPITO. And indeed, in 2018, we got uh, center approval for city and guilds. We already have that. But along the way, as you interact with the industry, you get to know what other qualifications that they need. Mm -hmm. So uh, we also acquired uh, ECITB. ECITB is uh, engineering industry uh, training, engineering industry and construction uh, training board uh, acronym. Usually, mix it up. Uh, so we also train welders and we give them certifications for uh, uh, American Welding Society. Mm -hmm. So Opito is quite specific on the oil and gas industry maintenance and operations, mm -hmm. uh, but there are others. Mm -hmm. And so, it, it, uh, but it has been one of the most covered. That's why it mm -hmm. is uh, coming out so mm -hmm. much. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But uh, we have the other four, and mm -hmm. we continue to engage uh, uh, oil companies. If there is demand for another one, mm. then we'll certainly not lose the opportunity just because now we have the infrastructure, so it's easy to get any other mm. accreditation. All right, brilliant. As we conclude, <coughs> Doctor, I'll mean. come back to you. Mm. Uh, Uganda is the 82nd member of World Skills International. Mm. How has this network improved skills development in the country mm. in just a few words? Okay, thank you. Uh, being a member of World Skills International has many advantages. Mm. Remember, 
you, w there are 84 now country member states, and in Africa we have about eight countries that are member states for our schools. But remember now you are sharing a table with somebody from Germany, somebody yes. from South Korea, <laughs> somebody from Japan, yeah. somebody from UK, somebody from Canada. And uh, the interaction that you get through, through that uh, uh, encounter is, is great. Mm. But I can say that being a member of our schools international make you to build your confidence, but also make you to get an exposure to such expert knowledge, to such uh, technology, equipment, mm. and, uh, and, uh, and learning experience. And uh, you copy and you can bring it back home. Mm. One key principle for our schools is that they train you right from now from Yam the official delegate. Right from you the official delegate, you have what we call a technical delegate. The experts are trained. Like now we want to participate in Namibia Africa region competition. And our experts are getting training, training. free of charge. Oh wow. Free of Amazing. charge because you're a member state. Yeah. And the that training that you get, the other advantage is that you you appreciate good practices and it helps you to improve your curriculum. Mm. So it helps you when you come back uh, to, uh, to review your curriculum and update, update it. But when you come back again, it helps you to train others, mm. including the staff that you work with. Uh, you leave out the students, that is a must, you have to train them, but <laughs> even the staff. Even the staff. The staff, you have to train them. Mm. And then it helps you to, 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 to 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 bring it brings there is a conference that bring on board uh, policy makers. Uh, uh, whenever we 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 converge, they are, we we have world skills competition every other year. So the, it is done in two two ways. That there is that technical conference, but also a, a, a meeting where the decision make makers meet. Like last time, our permanent secretary attended. So they discussed critical issues of, of, of skills development, of TVET, and the resolutions are made and they are taken on as global agenda. So it is, it is a lot of learning. But also, as, uh, as we compete, the, the industry get an opportunity of identifying the best and of course they can recruit right from there mm. recruit right from there but also making the the industry to work with the training this is a sure deal like right now we are working with Duffy, we are working with mayondo we are working with mkwano we are working with fairway we are working with various hotels and and industries so mm. it makes the, 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 the issue of uh, demand driven to become a reality that you, you have an exposure to work with other people. Mm. Since then, you got, when we became a member, we were able to, to attend, we have attended several meetings. Our experts have been uh, trained. We have been able to, uh, to attend uh, Chigali, Africa region Chigali competition, mm -hmm. where we, we even got some medals, silver and bronze. and. Uh, of course, we are collaborating with them, and they are training us to prepare us to go on. Well, mm, really. But uh, I just wanted to add on, now we have a center of excellence for oil and gas in Chigumba, mm. where Oscar is coming from. And uh, why the centers of uh, excellence were created is to see that what we train is appreciated here in the country, but also it is recognized international. Mm. And that's why we get those international accreditation. So now we have for oil and gas in Chigumba, but we have for, for manufacturing in Bushen, mm. we have for road construction in Lira, we have for general oh, construction sure. in Ergon, mm. and we have the for tourism in Jinja. So as a government, I want to thank our government that has recognized the importance of TVET and is supporting the training. And I want to thank the private <laughs> sector and the development partners that have come together. Mm. And of course, the heads and the, the staff of these institutions. Yeah. We can do it all, but if we don't involve them and if they are not ready to support us, then we the may not to go down. through. So we appreciate everybody. Mm. And in uh, my ministry, of course, I thank our minister 
permanent secretary and everybody in yeah. the Ministry of Education and Sports. Well, mm. thank you so much, Doctor. Mm -hmm. Any last words, uh, Oscar? Um, uh, last word is uh, I call everyone to enroll for these courses. Go yeah. to our website, upic.ac.ug. Follow um, us and you'll be able to know if there are opportunities. And then lastly, I would really, uh, if you allow me to pass a vote of thanks, it has mm -hmm. been a consorted effort to come this far. But we've had some lead people that have spent some sleepless nights. And mm -hmm. so I recognize our principal, Bernard Ongodia, yeah. uh, the project coordination coordinator, ARSDP, Agnes Arach, and our lead faculty, Claire Katana. We've all worked together, but those three have given it an extra mile, and there's no better place to appreciate them than at NTV. Well, Thank you. <laughs> I am sure they have had you, and they appreciate the thanks. Mm -hmm. uh, well, thank you, Doctor, for coming through. Thank you, Oscar, for coming through and having this discussion. So well, this thank you to thank you for giving us an opportunity. Uh, definitely you always give us an opportunity to come here and share issues yeah. of TV, and you are <laughs> one of our ambassadors. We appreciate NTV. Indeed, mm -hmm. NTV is part of uh, developing and pushing the country forward. Well, that brings us to the end of Tech Note.